take immense pleasure in introducing today's speaker. Mrs. Gita Galiyawa is a leading sports nutritionist with a PG Diploma International Olympic Committee. She is a registered dietitian, certified diabetics educator, and a university first ranker and a gold medalist. She is a noted speaker and columnist with vast experience of mentoring national and international and novice athletes by offering holistic sports nutrition coaching. Mrs. Geeta is an advisor to FSSAI, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, working group on use of supplements for sports person. Dear participants, get a chance to learn from Geeta who will really reveal some interesting facts and experiences on controlled diets and explore the needs for wellness. Over to you, Gita. Uh, Gita, can you please unmute yourself? Am I audible now? Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Wilma. And uh, I thanks Mr. Sen for uh, uh, having me over to do this uh, webinar and giving me this opportunity to mentor these young, uh, budding hospitality professionals. Uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, I hope this, this will be an informative session for you. Unfortunately, I may not be able to view you on the screen as I present. So, but if you have any uh, questions related to the presentation, uh, I would request you have that shared with Wilma so that we can take these questions once we have the session over. And uh, if, if there's anything to be um, communicated, uh, Wilma, you will, you will uh, pause me. Yes, Gita. I will okay. Go. Thank you. Great. Gita, I understand yes. your voice is a little breaking up. Is it? Okay, give me one moment. Yeah, okay. I am on Wi-Fi. All right, Gita, go ahead. No issues. Okay, all right. But yeah, in case in case, in case, case there's a disturbance or if there's any hassle, uh, do sound me off. So otherwise, I will not get to know. Yeah, good to go. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Wilma. And uh, thank you also for the lovely introduction. And uh, I think we've uh, fallen uh, behind schedule and uh, apologies for that. So let us commence. So, um, just to give you an overview of what we will be discussing, uh, the common challenges we have had uh, in the lockdown period. I think uh, a pandemic is a very rare event that one can experience and I think um, it's been um, yeah, a learning experience for all of us. So, what is going on with our food habits you know, and um, being uh, homebound, uh, there's definitely been a upheaval in uh, in the habits, so uh, we look at what what would be the good choices of what we eat and uh, what we can consume as drinks. Um, what about uh, especially? I know that uh, uh, Ami Institute also has a lot of girls, so we will be focusing on adolescent and girls' health. Definitely immunity, and uh, what can you do and not do uh, in um, terms to COVID, and uh, how can you manage weight uh, if you are not exercising and spending time. On fitness, how out can you kind of use food in order to help you manage your weight, and definitely your lifestyle, which will kind of keep your optimal um, immunity and definitely keep your emotional well-being in mind. Uh, so, uh, uh, starting from our first point here, um, there has been an erratic routine, and there's obviously a very easy option to reach out to fast food, which is obviously very uh, convenient. So uh, a Maggi, eating a cup of, uh, you know, bowl of Maggi probably is far more easier than cooking a meal from scratch. So a lot of us may resort to these kind of uh, easier options, uh, skipping meals, not eating on time, not able to have a routine or an exercise schedule, uh, definitely not able to step out into the sun or, you know, into daylight. Uh, many of us are homebound, uh, either there has um, been a lockdown or just, just uh, due to the fear of COVID, we are not able to step out. Um, I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, individuals who um, have uh, smoking habits or consume occasional alcohol or you know indulge in excessive coffee. Uh, and definitely there's been stress and anxiety. There were several challenges uh, in the pandemic time. So what could be our 
main goals to consuming normal food you know uh, there is no need to deviate from our regular routine but you know just just to be able to change the bit or tweak our you know carbohydrates that is our rice roti or you know the dals that we eat the kind of oil that we use at home itself can make a vast difference and uh, definitely we want to look at food uh, in order to take care of the immunity uh, in order to support um, our well being and definitely to be able to take care of the nutrients which mainly come from food so and that again has to be uh, when we do detailed uh, dietary counseling because that these are several aspects we look into or the parameters being the what are, what is the age the gender you know is it a boy or a girl uh, what are the other body fat composition parameters is there a very high amount of fat is the person overweight what is the type of food we eat the quality quantity what is the timing of these meals so that's the kind of detailed work we would do but of course here given the constraint of the time we'll be looking at it very, in a very brief manner so um, everybody does look at staple foods what is eaten in our homes and uh, that being your rice roti and of course uh, i'm sure there are a lot of north indian students uh, in the college so aloo or potatoes are quite popular i know a lot of our north indian friends who uh go without not eating potato in any single meal you know so uh, that's also uh, a means of carbohydrate and uh, there are also some form of carbohydrates that come from milk uh, fruits and definitely the use of uh, sugars so uh, what you really need to focus here is you know you have to ensure that your half your food comes from any kind of unrefined grains uh, being um, oats barley uh, brown rice hand pounded rice millets like ragi bajra jowa for the reason that these are more filling and uh, white rice gets digested very fast i think you kids will be uh, aware if you ate a maggi in one hour time you are hungry again so the whole idea is to be able to delay these hunger symptoms uh, because you may also tend to eat because of boredom so you have not just b vitamins which are very important for energy and immunity but uh, you you also have a high fiber intake through grains and that can kind of when you eat in a balanced meal uh, along with protein and other things which we will see in coming uh, slides it kind of helps you um, feel fuller have a satiety and uh, that's the reason you may tend to eat uh, you know at stipulated timing instead of unnecessary grazing or you know frequent snacking Uh, so uh, I'm sure quite a quite a few of you do love white bread. Uh, uh, so is pasta, which is quite refined. And what about corn flakes? Very popular uh, and very easy. Uh, but these are very fast absorbing, so they digest very fast. They're very high uh, glycemic index, what we call uh, GI. So um, uh, they kind of make you feel hungry uh, very soon. So um, and not to mention, uh, most of these packaged processed foods have very high amount of sugar to make them tasty. so you may want to just uh, use it occasionally for an emergency when you are not uh, you know having enough supplies at home and of course wheat is been a part of our diet uh, roti roti chapati is uh, unless until you have any health concerns uh, with wheat which sometimes is a genetic uh, disposition for indians uh, similar with milk like lactose Uh, there is no need to avoid wheat you can definitely use that so the biggest um, challenge here is uh, sugar uh, and we will see why sugar can be really bad uh, so sugar has become a part of uh, our diets and uh, you know uh, there are many kinds of sweeteners so sugar being quite popular so that's the refined sugar which is nothing but the sucrose or the what comes from uh, the sugar cane uh, then they have the unrefined version which is the brown sugar the traditional form of sweetener which was jaggery again honey which is said in natural uh, however the calorie difference between each of these is very marginal no jaggery has more iron content because it's processed in iron uh, skillets whereas uh, honey is again very natural and uh, you know uh, has health uh, or immune boosting properties but what happens to using uh, just a refined sugar mm, so the challenge here is that uh, it has similar pathways for absorption so it will uh, hinder or it will prevent the absorption of vitamin c uh, definitely vitamin d and it will make sure that the body will throw out or excrete or get rid of more calcium magnesium and um, certain micro minerals like chromium and uh, not to mention the effect it has on the brain because uh, the sugar has a, a reward system uh, similar to that of cocaine which is a drug so uh, it keeps you going back and craving for more sugar because every time you eat a sugar Uh, or sugary food, it kind of 
you know makes you uh, kind of uh, feel uh, elated uh, so the brain kind of uh, stops getting addicted to this feeling and that's one of the reasons that certain shruti foods are quite uh, rewarding and for that reason it is very difficult to wean off or to uh, eradicate from the diet so it's best to uh, moderate and avoid whenever possible and uh, sugar taken for athletes for adolescents in the right quantity in the right timing can be very beneficial so you have to see is it an athlete somebody who's indulging in physical fitness uh, is it a training time when you need a stipulated uh, concoction of a certain quantity of sugar that will be used or um, uh, is it going to be immediately after training when you know sugar taken when the liver glycogen is very low or glycogen synthase enzyme is very high sugar will not be converted uh, you know uh, to fat in the body but sugar goes into becoming glycogen itself so it depends as to when and why the sugar is taken and uh, there are several uh, ways to uh, use it very uh, judiciously for your benefits uh now the most important thing here is uh, protein so a lot of indians oversee protein and uh, um what we also uh, definitely not understand is uh, good quality protein is needed for antibodies now with covid antibodies is very important because they protect you from infection so uh, if you do not plan to eat adequate protein in all your meals which i think indians already have the challenge uh it can be quite a problem so you have to ensure that uh, we'll see in the next slide what could be the protein options so you have to ensure that, that you are eating some protein in all meals and you have to ensure that they are not just you eat two eggs in uh, breakfast so under khali hath you don't need anything else so or you know chalo ya hafte mein do baar dal kha liya we know a lot of people who talk like that you know uh, so nahi nahi dal to we bigger there's only it's made for lunch or it's made twice a week so you have to ensure that proteins are available in all meals and definitely about you know 20 or even 25 grams possible and typically non vegetarian meals have higher protein it's easy to get proteins in non vegetarian choices uh so a lot of people uh, also i think um, do not um, or rather understand that carbohydrates also have proteins very marginally and protein foods also have carbohydrates so uh, like a glass of milk may give you protein uh, so which is highlighted individually in every box uh, but sometimes they also give you carbohydrates which i talked about in the earlier slide you know like uh, milk sugar is lactose so uh, milk and curd definitely has carbohydrates now uh, there is foods like eggs uh, chicken uh, be it any other non vegetarian fish they have predominantly more protein and they do not have uh, carbohydrates in them and definitely a, a whey protein supplement which is purely mostly uh, you know uh, a protein source now in the vegetarians uh, there is definitely a challenge to get higher quality or higher quantity of proteins because they also contain large amounts of carbohydrates and you know there is always a challenge somebody probably can very easily eat about a big uh, fillet or a big chicken breast uh, of um, you know it could be a steak or kebabs whereas in vegetarians if you need to really get larger amounts of protein of 20 25 grams uh, it's kind of very challenging to eat about 300 400 grams which is you know almost like close to quarter kg or half kg of uh, you know a, a cooked dal so uh, they have slightly lower quality of proteins because they lack methionine uh, one of those uh, like a brick uh, like a hole in the wall you know one piece of the wall is missing and the brick is lost so you need to eat them in combination so uh, you know like um, idli dosa dal chawal rajma rajma roti so basically when you eat them together there is better quality protein and uh, uh they also have carbohydrates i talked about and definitely they have very high amount of fiber which makes you feel gassy uh so it's very challenging if you are eating pulses with the skin uh, uh in one go uh, so you have to ensure that it's spread across in smaller uh you know portions across the meals because uh then uh, too much fiber can also make you feel uncomfortable and uh, make can make you constipated if you do not uh, have enough water so um there are a lot of anti nutritional properties again like um, you know your fight dates or fight acids so um uh, you it's it's better if you to uh, soak them or scrub them so then it they are they are, and also remember to rinse the pulses as you soak your chana rajma keep changing the water frequently so that way you can get rid of all the unfavorable um nutri- nutrients so it, it, uh, the absorption of calcium 
magnesium and iron improves. Hmm? Now, uh, tofu and uh, soya products, these are very high in vegetarian forms of uh, proteins and um, also better because they are defective. So, soya is actually very high in fat. Uh, soya beans on itself may not be highly recommended because it has so much fat and other anti-nutritional property. But processed soya like you know, those uh, nuggets, uh, soya nuggets, soy granules, they are far more uh, better, um, uh, lesser anti-nutritional property. So, uh, but however, the males have um, testosterone as their hormone. So, excessive indulgence in uh, soya, if you're vegetarian, can be not very beneficial. So, just um, you know, limit or um, uh, moderate the amount of portions that you have from soya, uh, especially if you're a male, and uh, because they contain plant estrogen or phytoestrogen. Uh, nuts and seeds. Um, um, some nuts like peanuts are cheaper. Mm, so uh, seeds like watermelon seeds, pumpkin seeds, watermelon, uh, what else? Uh, you know, um, pumpkin, watermelon, and uh, these kind of seeds are also quite economical and reasonable to use. And they have certain, you know, uh, vitamins, even iron, vitamin E, you know, omega three. So they're cheaper and definitely value value for money. And uh, whatever is uh, easy, uh, accessible, can add uh, good quality proteins also in your uh, snacks. So if you use milk, uh, ensure you have them low fat or a skin that can help you keep your weight low. And red meat is a very high amount of saturated fat. So that's the reason we say eat less of them. Um, so now what happens with fats um, uh, is they, they have a lot of calories. You know, they have nine uh, calories for one gram, whereas uh, it's more than twice of that of carbohydrates and proteins. So um, if you can eat uh, fats in moderation, that's an advantage. Now, the quality of the fat is more important than, you know, uh, the quantity itself. So there is also fats available in the egg yolk, in the fish, in the red meat, um, definitely in the dolls and seeds, nuts. So fat also comes from food. So you have to ensure that you don't need more than two tablespoons or 30 grams or half the intake of the fat itself uh, should come from added ghee, butter and oils. Uh, you don't need more than that. So that itself is quite a lot actually, you know, even one teaspoon is about approximately five grams. So you already are using six grams there. So if you're looking at weight loss, you may obviously want to reduce the fat intake. And if or, or choose fats that come from good sources, so that could be your nut seeds, vegetarian version called the alpha linolenic acid, like your walnuts or, uh, you know, avocados. So um, cheaper oils will be our Indian cold pressed oil. So like kachigani, what you call them colloquially mustard oil and uh, till oils, these are better. Rice bran oil is also quite popular these days because it's good for uh, uh, reducing cholesterol. Uh, ghee and butter, you can use definitely every day. Ghee is being very uh, traditional in our Indian practice. So about half teaspoon, uh, teaspoon to one teaspoon, definitely use in your diet. Now, I don't know how many of you uh, use uh, sunflower oil in your homes. Uh, sunflower oil is very high amount of omega-6 and uh, they are kind of that's what leads to a lot of diseases and they are very pro-inflammation so uh, avoid that and junk food because a man made uh, trans fats so like when you deep fry consistently like uh, you all are going to be hoteliers and uh, in the hospitality industry uh, i know that as a dietitian and uh, you know a chef sometimes we have contradictory outlook to uh, to wellness so uh, but uh, anybody who pursues uh, Culinary, and you want to really make sure that you're not just dishing out uh, very uh, uh, yummy and appetizing meals, but you definitely have to ensure that you are keeping health in mind because uh, you all are hotel management students, and you have to ensure that food is not just you know very appetizing and um, you know uh, sumptuous, but you definitely have to be uh, able to cater to the health aspect of the client or your guests. So uh, deep frying repeatedly and using the same oil recycling. So that can break down the fat and uh, trans fats forms quite unhealthy. Uh, baked goods or the, your, your pastry chef is going to be quite annoyed hearing this, I'm sure from me. But uh, though as much as I love uh, baked goods too, uh, but over the years you kind of wean off and eat lesser and lesser quantity. So who, who can resist a lovely, uh, you know, uh, dark chocolate cake? or anything made uh, with dark chocolate so um, but uh, baked goods have the highest amount of trans fats because whenever butter is subject to very high temperature it changes its structure so this uh, this trans fats is what is bad and it causes inflammation leads to a lot of diseases so um, 
uh, this this can be just uh, restricted. So you don't for a two thousand calorie diet, you don't need more than two percent. So that is two grams, you know. And uh, and typically in the food label, if it says trans fats free, you definitely want to be careful because it has uh, one serving has less than zero point five grams of trans fats. So that can kind of repeatedly overdoing foods rich in trans fats can lead to increased um, fat cholesterol. And uh, later on in life, in your decades, uh, in your twenties, your thirties, that's where diseases start. But uh, the blocking of the artery walls or the atherosclerosis or plaque, plaque formation, what we call, has started very early in life, and it has taken decades for you to kind of uh, start seeing diseases that is kind of really uh, started very early in life. Uh, now, uh, uh, what about uh, vegetables and fruits? So, World Health Organization has also recommended that uh, with COVID, uh, ensure you have very healthy meals. Okay, and uh, the recommendations are definitely you need to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Anything that's local, seasonal, easily available. You don't have to be, you know, make it make it anything fancy. Uh, the deeper the color, the more the antioxidants. You know, and those pigments are quite powerful to protect your body. And so uh, goes without saying, all these uh, dark leafy vegetables and a lot of other uh, vegetables, which have very high amount of water content, are low in calories. And starchy vegetables, um, uh, as with eating, you know, your rice and roti, if you just, uh, it goes with common sense. So if you eat aloo or you know, say any other good vegetable, like say beetroot or carrots, you can just reduce the portion of your rice and roti because uh, these. Uh, vegetables also contain a lot of starch, so it is equivalent to eating um, a rice and roti. So uh, sometimes I know you may have already read or heard uh, fruits. When do you eat them? Do you eat it with meals? Uh, if, do you eat it after meals or on empty stomach? So um, uh, one size uh, fits all never works. So uh, you would rather have the fruit at any time that's convenient for you than not eat at all. So, but ideally, of course, you may want to eat them as a snack. Uh, but again, that really depends. Um, sometimes we tell diabetics to eat fruits with with a uh, with a meal or with including some nuts and seeds because uh, the proteins and fats delay the absorption of the sugars. So it's very contextual, and uh, you know we cannot generalize. Uh, and uh, definitely, uh, being indoors, sometimes we forget to drink enough water. Uh, water is extremely important, but uh, drink as much as. Make, what makes you feel comfortable? There's no rule to say eight ounces, eight glasses. We had certain uh, basic standards which we had, um, you know, uh, heard over years, uh, but that's not uh, true. Um, and the fruit juices, what happens is, you if you do not strain and you're having the, the juice with the fiber, then that kind of can keep you full. Uh, but if you discard the fiber and it's just the liquid or the water, so um, uh, may not be um, uh, kind of satiating or it will not be wise. Uh, of course, if you have too much sugar, then that beats the purpose again. So whereas green tea, very high in antioxidants, uh, catechins, um, epi uh, galacto, catechin gallate, so these antioxidants are quite powerful. You know, the theoflavins, they kind of boost your uh, immunity and, um, you know, reduce inflammation. So similarly, if you have too much coffee, like the, I think, caffeine, um, the recommendation is about 400 mg for a day, but uh, you know, a strong cup of coffee itself can give you anywhere between 150 to 200 mg coffee. Mm. So similar is with the you know with the previous slide when I said eggs. Please do eat the whole eggs because one a yolk has 300 mg cholesterol, uh, and uh, the limitation or the or rather the limit upper upper limit to taking the cholesterol itself is 400 uh, mg cholesterol from food. Uh, but then again, it depends on your young, uh, you know, individuals. You can definitely afford to eat two more egg yolks because egg yolk is also got all the nutrients, the omega three, the vitamin E, the biotin, the B twelve. So whereas egg white is just three point five grams of albumin, it's just protein. So whole eggs are also quite nutritious. And of course, if you have tea with food, uh, uh, they have anti-nutritional property like tannins. Uh, so is tamarind spices. They all have tannins. So um, uh, small use of it uh, in food is inevitable, but if you have excessive, like taking tea with food can kind of reduce absorption of other important nutrients. Once it's finished, uh, now we focus on women's health. Uh, you know, uh, with the regular menstruation, there's definitely uh, the higher requirement of iron. For that matter, even uh, boys also have good need of iron or rather uh, 
there is there is a, a requirement of iron in your diet because of expanding blood volume, the final growth spurt of your your adolescence. You know, in that prime puberty, about 18, 19 years. So you, you need a very high amount of absorbable iron. So non-veg gives you iron that can be easily taken up by the body. If you're vegetarian and you get it from your chickpeas, like your chana or you know any dark green leafy vegetables. Um, you know, you have to ensure that you add some kind of, you know, vitamin C. It could be a cut tomato or, you know, just squeeze a little lime on the food when you eat. So that way you have better absorption of iron when you're a vegetarian. So girls definitely have requirement of folate. So that is dark green leafy vegetables. B6, B12 predominantly come from non-vegetarian foods. So uh, if you are a vegan and do not take any uh, milk or dairy product or do not take eggs, then that can be a big hassle and you may want to take your uh, or uh, you may want to do your blood test so that you want to address if you have a deficiency and then you may want to supplement it either by oral uh, tablets or capsules and uh, also by injection. So uh, if you do not have adequate of these nutrients, sometimes you will have iron deficiency, anemia, you're tired. And sometimes um, I've had some clients who reached out to me and said, you know, I don't feel like getting up in the morning. I feel very exhausted. You know, and I'm tired. And sometimes these are vegetarian uh, clients. So, you know, not being able to step out, not keeping fit. So obviously the body becomes very sluggish and, you know, slow. So you may want to take care of these uh, foods, which I've just mentioned, like even dates, raisins, steaks. You know, whatever is reasonable for you, you can opt for a handful of these every day. You know, and uh, then on an ongoing process, if you can eat some dry fruits and nuts, that, that can be quite healthy snacking by itself. Uh, calcium, uh, and again, very important because maximum bone formation or ossification occurs within 20 years of age. And um, uh, which we, you need for lifelong, and especially if you're a girl, uh, based on your biological cycle of your pregnancy, giving birth, uh, calcium is highly in need for uh, the uh, formation of the fetus and in the breast milk. So uh, later on in your life, later in your 40s, you may have weaker bones, risk of injury, you know, fractures. So you have to ensure that you definitely uh, have good adequate in intake of calcium and milk. We hear is the richest source, or rather it is the richest source of calcium, but the absorption is 30% only because you need a good amount of vitamin uh, D for absorption. Uh, so again, calcium metabolism is very complicated. Calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, you need vitamin D. So, um, and you have other several important uh, source of calcium, uh, that being your soya itself. So your uh, almonds, pill, uh, like your sesame seeds, uh, broccoli, calcium. So these uh, almonds, uh, excellent source of calcium. So you can definitely use um, whatever is available um, uh, at your homes. And uh, during uh, PMS or your premenstrual, uh, if you have any uh, symptoms of uh, cramping, bloating, mood swings, sometimes just to be able to manage the food itself is uh, very helpful. So uh, magnesium, um, uh, dark green leafy vegetables, nuts, seeds, the good source of magnesium, soaked almonds, you can peel them and eat them. They're the excellent source of vitamin E. B6, I've already told you, comes from mainly non-vegetarian food. And omega-3 is a little difficult to get in vegetarian options. So, Omega-3 is better of uh, the smaller tiny fish like sardines, mackerel, uh, because uh, vegetarian omega conversion in the body is less than 5 to 15 percent. So it's very poor and that could be your, again, your um, seeds, uh, chia seeds and um, omega-3 avocados, walnuts, okay, those are vegetarian options. Iodine, uh, very important for thyroid because thyroid hormones control the entire metabolic pathways. So iodized salt is the best way to get iodine and selenium, um, you can get them from um, Brazil nut, but they are imported nuts, they're very expensive. So you could alternatively swap for a little bit of cashew nuts, you know, chicken and non-vegetarian foods also gives you selenium. Uh, biscuits are very popular in every household uh, and also in corporate world, uh, from every office to everywhere I've worked. They've always had some biscuits along, so uh, very important to uh, pay attention to the serving size and uh, uh, you have to be able to restrict yourself to just a few and uh, otherwise uh, they, they're quite unhealthy and there's nothing useful coming out of it. Uh, even if a multi-grain, if they market it as multi-grain, uh, they have higher sugar than a regular biscuit. 
So uh, it's quite shocking. I, many of you don't read, uh, read the food labels. Uh, but again, if you take sugarless, you have artificial sweeteners. So uh, understand that you're a diabetic and uh, you may look at trying to eradicate or get rid of the sugar if they're not be very helpful at all. Uh, so, and of course, we've talked of trans fats. Any big groups have very high trans fats, including uh, So, uh, what do you snack when you're at home and you're bored or you just sometimes don't, don't know what to do or nothing to do, but you have a tendency to eat? So I think roasted uh, snacks, anything which is based out of milk or dairy, if you are a vegetarian and consume those buttermilk and you know um, um, milkshakes, smoothies, these are good options. Or you could just swap for a tray, mix a handful of nuts, one handful only, not more. Uh, so these are uh, definitely protein choices. So. Uh, in some way, they kind of add more value to you instead of eating junk. So uh, then, of course, keep the skin on the peanuts. They have resveratrol, the same pigment found in red wine. Um, they add fiber, definitely protein. And the soya, if your boys just moderate those with soya beans, you get roasted soya. Then you get puffed also, puffed snacks like puffed full makana. These are very low in calorie, puffed corn, puffed joa. So these are. Uh, definitely healthier options uh, because deep fried foods are very high in, again in calories and uh, trans fats. Now, um, uh, what about uh, alcohol? So, if you consume alcohol, just ensure you have limited um, serving only. Uh, very important because uh, excessive alcohol can weaken your immunity. And that is not something that you want to do in COVID. Huh? It can lead to inflammation and definitely weight gain. It is very high in calories. Uh, similar, I've already talked of caffeine. Uh, how caffeine is a stimulant, uh, central nervous system, it kind of gives you a high and you feel quite excited. And, but then, of course, uh, the slump or so as the caffeine levels fall, uh, it can kind of make you feel very sullen or feel very bad. So simple uh, methods of cooking will be uh, definitely the ones that are uh, I think that time uh, is, uh, most sought after from like, our uh, traditional practices, like, just like, using water. So that could be boiling, steaming, you know, and uh, poaching is typically common for eggs. Uh, pressure cooking is very time saving and the, the best option. Uh, grilling, uh, charbroiled foods, what do you call tandoori foods? They're actually very harmful because, um, especially if you make non veg, uh, they form cancer uh, or cancerous compounds. and. Uh, now I got They're not advisable. So we'll restrict uh, tandoori or bling or barbecue foods. Uh, if you deep fry, uh, ensure you throw the oil because then there's a lot of beans, um, uh, you know, those, those chemicals that break down, you know, uh, peroxides and uh, so many other compounds which are not favorable. So it is best to throw away the oil once you deep fry. Sunflower oil, ironically, is the best oil for deep frying. So is, sun, uh, so is coconut oil. Uh, so uh, if you want to restrict te Teflon, so they're just using our iron, iron tawa, iron kadai, they are the best ones and uh, definitely avoid plastic even if you use microwaves. Food grade plastic um, is commonly available but uh, use uh, glass ceramic which are safer. With regards to COVID and uh, definitely our, our traditional, uh, you know, um, Indian practices have been come have been brought back to the fore again um, because of uh, the government uh, guidelines itself with Ayush. Many homes, I'm sure you already practice all of these. Uh, so going back to using Tulsi, uh, like you know, boiling Tulsi in water or making the kind of a tea, a herbal tea or khada, what they call it. So you can definitely use tea. Tea is excellent for weight loss because they have very marginal amount of caffeine, 25 mg only in a cup. So uh, green tea, black tea have um, uh, you know, uh, theoflavin, so uh, similar like the catechins or the green tea, very high in antioxidants, uh, so they have no calories and uh, warm fluids are quite uh, helpful. So, uh, again, using ginger, be fresh, dry. Uh, you crush the garlic, keep it for 15 minutes, and then you use it. So, that sulfur containing allicin is released, so that is antibacterial, so it kind of helps, uh, helps you cope with your uh, immunity and. Uh, or rather kind of can prevent infections. So using your jeera, coriander, uh, cinnamon, pepper. Pepper is quite popular always. Uh, anytime you have a cold, you know, in South India, uh, rasam and a lot of these pepper dishes are quite popular. So with turmeric, um, there is a pigment called the yellow pigment, the curcumin. Now, um, curcumin can get destroyed or will reduce when you cook with it. So you add the haldi after you finish the cooking. 
okay so when you have a little bit of a pinch of pepper it can help increase the absorption of curcumin hmm, in the turmeric so dark chocolate again is quite uh, uh, very uh, powerful in flavonoid so good option uh, just about uh, one or two blocks not the whole chocolate why do you see like uh, with covid a lot of updates which have regularly been published on how vitamin c or another even vitamin d which i'll just talk in the couple of slides vitamin c is very helpful uh you know in boosting uh, the immunity because it can kind of delay or prevent uh, the symptoms uh, so you recover very fast so fresh fruits and vegetables is what gives you vitamin c because vitamin c will get killed if you cook with it or you extract a juice out of musambi and keep it exposed to light and air you know the vitamin c will get killed so there is no point in just destroying that so you eat the whole fruit which will be better for you uh selenium i already talked of and uh, similar is zinc zinc is uh, you know i don't know what uh, the uh, word is in hindi but is uh, oysters or mussels what come in a shell so they are the richest source of zinc so uh, and commonly of course if you eat a balanced diet be it nuts seeds pulses uh, so you will get some of these uh, micro minerals in your diet uh, now um, a lot of emphasis on microbiome good bacteria in your gut Uh, and the gut and brain connection. So fermented foods, India has been very popular with using our own foods. So be it you know pickles or curd. Uh, curd is again fermented milk. So uh, in South India they used to do this overnight rice. You just soak it in water and drink that, which is I believe quite popular. So even in the United States, in the supermarkets, bottled mm, for which are quite a price. Uh, so even fibers that you eat from whole grains, pulses. your uh, vegetables and uh, fruits these fibers also ferment and they lead to uh, short chain fatty acids they lead to they call prebiotics you know a probiotic is life which has the bacteria and prebiotic is what feeds the gut bacteria so all these fibers are also good for your health uh, something that has been overlooked probably uh, for all of us with this pandemic is the gutic routine so uh, sleep is definitely uh, you know one of the uh, challenge areas um so sound sleep if you sleep well and, and try and go to bed at the same time and try and wake up at the same time they really have an impact on the hormones uh, particularly your ghrelin and leptin now leptin is a appetite suppressing hormone so if you sleep well and it uh, helps you keep your leptin very high and that's why you will eat less so your weight is under Uh, control and definitely in diabetics or those who are overweight there's better control of your insulin uh, so it also of course not to mention how a good night's rest can make you feel more uh, calmer in your head more rested you know more rejuvenated uh, so certain protein rich foods uh, have uh, an influence on dopamine and the dopamine also influences sleep so tryptophan comes from all your non vegetarian options and uh, like you heard of thanksgiving in us so the you know turkey rolls for that matter chicken or even a glass of milk uh, even in india you see any hindi movie there will always be either the mother or the wife who's giving uh, a glass of milk being served at that time so the reason why this was followed was because milk has the uh, amino acid called tryptophan and tryptophan uh, helps produce a sleep hormone called serotonin uh, similarly melatonin i will talk in the next slide of how just exposing yourself to sunlight uh, can increase these hormones the sleep hormones so uh, sunlight early morning sun exposure or uh, even the midday like the daytime why you need to be outdoors for some time is because there's an influence on these hormones and you actually sleep better and some amount of if you are looking at weight loss and if you do not eat well you are skipping on your meals uh, that can also reduce your sleep because some amount of rice roti in your dinner can actually help you sleep better uh i just talked of how it's important to be able to uh, get some light uh, just exposing yourself to early morning sun rays can enhance your circadian rhythm which is basically you know how your body can kind of function through the entire uh, day and night routine you know so um definitely uh, brain chemicals certain uh, chemicals have an impact uh, because of the sun rays uh, helps you lose weight so uh, sun exposure is a must uh, especially with vitamin d uh, uvb rays are available only between 10 and uh, 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon so um, you need to be there at least 15 20 minutes either in your balcony or your terrace if you have access just to be uh, uh exposing yourself without uh, sunscreen uh, on a naked skin maybe your hands and legs uh, at least once or twice in a week it's quite important um 
because yeah. even the best of uh, the food, because uh, vitamin D is very limited uh, in food. You get it from omega-3 or certain fish like your fatty <coughs> fish like sardines or mackerel and salmon. So the ones, especially the ones you eat with the bones like sardines. So uh, salmon being the most priciest of the fish still gives you very limited amount of uh, vitamin D. Whereas just getting out in the sun for 15-20 minutes till your skin starts the, to feel the burning sensation or the twitching. You need to be in the sun till that time and you are able to get up to 3000 IU which is quite high. What you may need is 600 to 800 IU. So it's free and it's just uh, you could you could be in the sun for two to three days. Um, as much as we've been hearing about de-stressing, uh, I myself have succumbed to the challenges of having a, a regular routine. So um, you uh, definitely have to look at your own uh, practices as to what works for you. Um, somebody may enjoy music, somebody may enjoy exercise. So uh, you have to figure what, what may work for you. Uh, so, but unfortunately these uh, anxiety, continuous stress, uh, you know, as, a, as an ongoing process. So uh, the cortisol, which is a stress hormone itself, can bring down your immunity. And that can kind of, again, make you uh, susceptible to infections. So if you can uh, practice yoga, meditation, or I, I think as young uh, children, or rather adolescents, you have the opportunity to be able to exercise. So focus on some fitness. And, uh, you know, there are so many benefits of exercise. It's free and it takes care of your health. And, of course, your brain chemicals, endorphins are released. So um, you kind of feel good when you sweat. And it uh, uh, also helps you maintain your weight. So now if you have the opportunity to do a blood test, uh, it will be advisable to check what your levels of vitamin D are. And whenever you supplement, one caution is, Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, so you have to be able to take some fat in your food, otherwise it will not get absorbed. And vitamin D also gets stored in the liver, so which means that um, unnecessarily excessive supplementation can be quite, uh, you know, um, toxic. So you may not want to harm yourself. So uh, you need to work with a healthcare professional, either a doctor or a qualified dietitian to ensure that these these values are kind of uh, looked into and there is a very uh, scientific um, supplementation protocol followed. Uh, definitely avoid cod liver oil because cod liver oil is not vitamin D. Uh, though it has small amounts of vitamin D, it has excessive amount of vitamin D. So many people mistake that cod liver oil is you know, vitamin D. So uh, there is a very clear demarcation of that. Uh, so a lot of zinc supplements are available in the market uh, in order to improve immunity. So uh, again, I very recently shared on my social media how excessive zinc can reduce copper, you know, in your body. So you have to just be careful with that too. Uh, vitamin C, of course, if you are not able to eat fruits, vegetables, you can take 500 mg any vitamin uh, C, um, you know, supplement and. Vitamin C, um, what it does is mainly the science or evidences suggest that the symptoms of cold and upper respiratory tract infection reduce. Okay, uh, so otherwise it may not because uh, uh, COVID is virus, so we don't know how much vitamin C can prevent infection per se. But the the science says that it can reduce the symptoms. Uh, definitely, uh, even with COVID, we've had publications which said that people with very high vitamin D and vitamin C recover better even after a COVID infection. Yeah, so, um, how does one manage weight? Uh, exercise uh, predominantly, weight bearing, strength training, uh, lunges, body weight exercise, pull ups, push ups, skipping, uh, Surya Namaskar. So, these are ways of tackling weight bearing exercise. Uh, definitely, uh, high protein diet is very important, particularly if you eat less rice roti. Uh, so, say for example, you burn about, on an average, okay, 200 calories or 300 calories if you exercise for one hour. So, if you're not able to eat, uh, exercise, then the best thing to do is just reduce one big bowl of rice, which could be about 250 grams, 300 grams, or three full cars, a small size of, you know, three full cars is three, approximately 300 calories. So the least you could do is just reduce, you know, your portions of rice and roti, and that way you know that you are eating less. But don't compromise on quality proteins and fruits, vegetables in your diet. Uh, apple cider vinegar has been quite popular. So uh, vinegar helps control uh, or rather slow down digestion. So when the hunger is delayed, uh, your food intake automatically comes down. 
So here are some uh, pictures of uh, portions, uh, what, what your non-veg uh, size of your chicken or fish can be, or carbohydrate, uh, you know, your uh, grain portion, which is raw, or your food portion, or, uh, sorry, or rather your vegetable portion, how much. So, you know, there is no need to, I had clients, some of them who bathe their food and eat them. So you can uh, just, just be flexible with these and um, just, just uh, understand what is balanced meals. Uh, eating food groups together, rice, roti, sabzi. I think Indian mixed meals are an excellent terms of, uh, example. So you know what you eat and definitely also how you live. Uh, so lifestyle is very important. Um, try and maintain a balance and it's okay one day if you have gone haywire and you can just focus on trying coming back to a routine. Um, uh, definitely eat home cooked meals because ordering outside uh, or, or rather ordering in from outside or eating uh, even um, food from outside going out itself is a big risk with COVID so either pick up a skill also uh, try and try and learn cooking as hotel management students this is an advantage for you probably experiment with new ingredients or a recipe whatever is available at home so connect with your friends if you're not able to meet them in person uh, you know call call a family member or you know or definitely on a phone so I think virtually the world has become so much closer today and uh, uh, you know online was never uh, a boom as what is this currently so definitely spend some time outdoors and if you are outdoor please do wear a mask or you know keep your hands you know um, use a sanitizer wash your hands uh, exercise uh, um, definitely goes without saying any form in some way you talking to a friend just keep you know pacing up and down so try and get movement or your physical activity what we call PAL just keep moving as much as possible in the day uh, maintain uh, uh, maintain a journal or you can also pick up a hobby definitely sleep well have the same schedule restrict screen, screen time which is uh, quite uh, uh, easier said than done uh, it's like a black hole it just sucks you in but ensure that you try and uh, you know uh, refrain, refrain from indulgence with excessive screen time so uh, with this I've uh, ended my presentation if anybody wants a last slide, uh, you can reach me on my uh, this is my email.